Welcome to Six Gun Guitars Luthier video series. In this one we are going to cover how to slot a bridge with a jig for it. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to help put the angled slot for the saddle on the bridge without having to guess and without having to really work at it too hard after you make the jig. Um, the jig in this sense just consists of a few pieces of scrap. There are a couple of pieces here that are set on a 90 degree angle so that way I can clamp the bridge break in place. And then this piece right here is determined by the angle of the saddle slot and what it does is it provides a piece for the Dremel router base to ride up against while the cutter is cutting our angled hole in the bridge plank. So what you wind up doing, again I'm going to put instructions for this on the website probably fairly soon but I think just from what you can see here uh, most folks can probably make this yourself. Again if you can make an acoustic guitar you can more than likely make this jig. The reason that it's so thick and so bulky is that I need to get these pieces glued on here and screwed on here with a recess down in here because the blade itself, when I ride along here, the blade itself drags along in through here. And this piece is going to be clamped down in here, and that's where I want it to hit. I don't want it to hit anything else. I want it to be hung over here a little bit. So you have to do a little bit of measuring based on your router setup and how you do it. But I have this little piece with a couple of screws in it, and that is what I use to clamp it down. So what I would do is come over and just clamp this in. Now what that does is it keeps this piece in here, and it keeps it from coming up, because that's going to be the tendency when you use the spiral cutter is as you're coming along, it's going to want to suck this piece up. So what I do every now and then when I have an odd size bridge or something that's a little bit smaller, I'll shim this with a piece of uh, binding strip or another little piece of wood just to make sure that it's in there and it's rock solid. Um, for demo purposes, I'm not going to do that, even though this one is just a little bit on the loose side. And the way that you check that is just see if you can lift it. And if you can lift it with your fingers, the Dremel tool with the spiraling cutter will definitely dig into it and lift it. So we want to keep it down where we want it because we're going to control the depth of the slot. And the way that you do that is with the Dremel tool and the and the length that you bring the bit out here. So what I like to do is I set my entire setup up here like this and I look on this far side and I adjust my up and down here on the Dremel and on the router base so that way it just takes a little bit off at a time. You really can't do this in one pass because it'll eat the piece of wood and it'll, it has a tendency of taking the bit and dragging it to the left or the right and you, you don't wind up having a nice looking hole that way. So I usually do this in like sixteenth of an inch passes. So what I would do is set it up, I would look down here on the side to see how deep I'm going and then I hold it up against my railing here put a couple clamps on here so it doesn't go anywhere, hold it up against the railing and then very slowly bring it over to where it actually needs to be to start. I lift it up just a hair, turn it on and very carefully set it down in to make the very first cut so that way it's you know, nice and straight and right where it needs to be. And then I slowly pull this unit back like this with even pressure and I keep it up against this railing. Now if it's up against the railing it's going to copy whatever the angle is here and I've got the angle set to the same saddle angle that I like. So I bring it all the way to the end of where I've got marked for the hole and then turn off the unit. Then you lift it out. You don't want to monkey around with lifting it out while it's on because if you twist it or turn it from side to side it's going to ding the hole and it's just not going to be straight and it's not going to look good. And on top of that if your hole's too wide or has too many little dings on it, it's not going to hold that saddle well and it's not going to be good for transmitting the vibration from the, string, from the strings into the soundboard as well. So after I make my first pass what I would do is I'll adjust my unit down about another sixteenth of an inch, come back, keep it angled up just a little bit, turn it on, let it plunge in, and then again very slowly come along and pull it back this way until it reaches the end of the slot. You just keep repeating that procedure over and over again until you get to the desired depth that you're looking for. Um, I test my saddles in here afterward just to make sure that they fit and if they do not, if it's a little bit too skinny of a hole depending on which type of bit you're using, I use the little spiral down cutter bits. Um, you can get those from Stuart McDonald or Luther's Mercantile. But what I'll do is I'll come along here and I'll put in a couple of pieces of masking tape. And again to show you what it winds up looking like is just like this, just right up against this little slide here. I'll start by putting in maybe two or three pieces of masking tape and what that'll do is because we're riding up against this board it's going to push the router back just a hair and it's going to widen that slot. Um, normally depending on the type of bridge material that I'm using I have to get up to six or eight pieces of tape nice and firmly put on here so that way it pushes it off just enough that you can make the perfect size slot. Um, don't do it six or eight at a time, do it two at a time. Because do two, run it through, check it. Do two, run it through again, check it. You want to get right to the point where your slot, with just a little bit of pressure, will go ahead and all the way down and seat itself in there. You don't want to have it so your hole is so darn big that the slot, the saddle is moving from side to side like this. Um, but again, I'm going to put instructions for how to build this or how I built mine on the website. But most folks will probably do, do the best just taking a look at what I've done here and building something similar for themselves. Um, again, the way that this angle works is take a look at the angle of your bridge and you need to measure that in degrees in relation to in relation to 90 which is here. So the reason this works is the bridge is in here at 90 degrees to where I'm cutting but now this guy makes me cut at an angle. So again just by looking at this and taking a look at some of the stuff that's online 
and some of the other stuff that's out there too, it's very easy to make a jig like this because it takes all of the danger and all of the freehand out of routing a slot in here. Um, I'm pretty sure you could probably do one freehand if you really, really took your time and you really went at it carefully. But again, it's just it's such a delicate operation and so much relies on that saddle sitting in there properly that having a jig and doing it this way, yeah, it takes some time to make the jig, but after this, it's clamp, measure for how where I want my saddle, and make about five or eight passes until you get to the depth that you're looking for.